Hi, welcome to the Tuesday Crew. I'm Liesl. I'm Stu. And this is our school bus Tuesday. We're here at Schooly Palooza 2022. And we're excited to show you guys our bus. My husband and I, we love to cook. So building a big kitchen was really important to us. We wanted to have it be really functional to feel like you're not trapped inside of a small area because people in schooly life, they think, oh, why would you want to live inside of a school bus? You know, you feel so enclosed. So we wanted to make sure we had a big galley kitchen area. We um, built a lot of cupboards and have a lot of fun drawers for lots of storage. Snack drawer is my favorite drawer of the whole house, definitely. Um, we found this awesome stove. We repurposed it. It was all white and really covered in rust and really old. And we um, sanded it down and got it looking pretty. It's a gas stove, which is awesome. And we love cooking on gas. This was an awesome find, being a mini, mini version. We got these countertops at our local Home Depot. They're butcher block and they are fantastic. We decided to cut this radius here we didn't want it to have to be a square because when you walk into the bus, we kind of wanted to have this feeling. We wanted a lot of people to come in and touch the wood to give it that nice oiled surface. And it just, you're not gonna hit your hip when you walk into the bus. So this, this addition, I really, really like that we did for our kitchen here. On our overhead countertops, we had a lot of fun learning how to do these awesome glue ups. They take a lot of time, but they're definitely worth the effort. They give a beautiful look of all these different types of hardwoods that we just bought at our local Home Depot. Um, our cupboards, when they open up, they're on hydraulics, which I think is a nice touch. It stays open. We also added in motion sensor lights, which are just on magnets, which are great. We added in a nice touch of maps on the inside as well, which I really like. So in these here, we mostly keep stored our bulk tea, because we're big tea drinkers, and all of our bulk foods in these large containers here. We had some issues at the very beginning with our cupboards flying open with bouncy roads, and they would swing open and everything would fall out, and it was kind of disastrous. So we found these ball latches that you can tighten and screw down, so it gives a tighter click, which is awesome, but we definitely want to upgrade to some type of magnet system that we have for our lower cabinets. They're actually just child locks. And so we lock it here from the inside and it stays locked the entire time we drive. And then when we're ready to be parked somewhere, we just unlock there. So definitely want to find a way to integrate that for the upper cabinets. I think that would be a great addition. This sink here, I can't talk enough about how great it is to have a large sink inside of a school bus. It's multifunctional. I do my laundry in it. I, uh, you know, hang up a clothesline, wash my laundry in there, washing big pots and pans. I see in a lot of rigs, they have those small sinks, which are awesome for the space, but I don't feel like they're as functional for washing bigger things. I will say though, when we first purchased this and it came in, I was terrified of the size. It felt so big, I didn't, I thought it was gonna overpower the area, but now I absolutely love having this deep sink. Our refrigerator is down here. I love that it comes out on a glide and it just goes back in. I think it's really convenient for the heavy, heavy box itself. It's a chest here and we have never felt limited by this space. It definitely you have to dig around and pull out different things, but I love, love, we've been very happy with this. I definitely would suggest a chest style fridge. I had fears for the tall vertical standing ones that I wouldn't be able to secure the swing out. So this, it's not only tucked away, but it also has a latch here. And as far as power consumption goes, our fridge has a setting where it switches to eco mode if we're low on battery or it's a cloudier day. And we've never personally had any issues with it getting too hot and, you know, food is spoiling. It stays pretty cold, which I really like about it. Um, behind here, we have our tank, uh, tankless hot water heater and all of our plumbing system. Um, all on Schooly and all online and all on YouTube, we read that you can't put in a tankless hot water heater inside your bus because they have to vent. And we didn't know where we were going to store it or where, what we were going to do. So we um, actually have it venting here through a vent on our top here. 
and we included a simple uh, thermal switch from a computer. And so when it gets hot enough and the heat turns on, the thermal switch kicks on, which turns on a fan. So it vents out here. And if we're ever, you know, taking a longer hot shower or washing a lot of pots and pans, we just open up our window and it vents that way. And we haven't had any issues. We have a carbon monoxide detector and a propane detector. So haven't had any issues having it in house. This cover here is one of my favorites because it has hanging all of our lids and then here on the other side our pots and pans hang because I don't know if you guys get frustrated like I do trying to store in a bunch and you open up the cupboard and everything falls out so they stay tucked away here and also this is our countertop extension we call it when we're cooking and we have a lot going on we also use this as an extension for our countertop and over here we have our dishes we really like to use glass when you're in a school bus, you're bouncing down the road, how are you not going to have your glass break? So we built this divider here for each plate to slide in nicely so there's less rattling. And we kind of built it around what we have. And again, they're on those nice safety child locks, which are fantastic. I highly recommend having those. And another overhead compartment, which we store you know, empty water bottles in our tea maker. And this here is a really fun thing. It's a surprise drop down mirror. We didn't have a mirror anywhere in the house, so we figured we'd add one. It's nice for, you know, haircuts and whatnot. This is our awesome little desk area here. Fun glue up with some cherry wood. We also did this glue up here down the drawers, which I really love. Keeps all of our papers organized. And it also hides our awesome homemade composting toilet. This was a cajon, which is a box drum, that we had built over a year ago, and it was the seat to our desk, and we were in need of a composting toilet. So we just built on and added in a toilet there. We have a sawdust on the side here in that drawer, which is great, it tucks in and hides away. So this is our little shower area over here. There's not a shower curtain that goes with it because we were really adamant on not building any walls in our bus. It was really important to have all of our windows open for that 360 panoramic view. We definitely are views junkies, so we like to have that natural light come in in that natural space. But with that, we needed still some way to clean our bodies, so we have a multifunctional shower here. Um, this is a trap door in the floor that lifts up, and we inlaid in a sink that we bought and so you can wash your hair, wash off your feet from your sandy from the beach, do a little bird bath, or if we're parked somewhere where we don't have any neighbors, we just drop down the window here and we have a hook that goes to the outside. So we take outdoor showers most of the time, which is awesome. Has an awesome hot water and cold water, which is great. And this here is our sneaky little medicine cabinet behind a picture frame hidden away, which is really great. So this area of the bus had a large transformation. Um, it used to be boxed in, and that's where all of the first aid kit and emergency stuff was. So we tore it all out, turned it into an open shelf area, which I'm very happy we did. Back here hosts what we call the brain of the bus, all of the fuses, everything, and it used to lie here, but we painstakingly rewired and moved everything over here, so it's more out of the way, which is great. And we added some cork onto it to add a little bit of our personalities into the bus to show our photography and home photos. And same thing on the shelves here. We really like these curves, these curved corners, so that was really a fun touch to do. Books. Um, we really got into using copper as uh, shelf bars, which was really, really a fun project to do. So we just went to Home Depot and purchased a bunch of copper to give it that nice antique, you know, worn kind of look. So we have those touches all along the bus as well. And another cork board over here for, you know, fun mementos and stuff from trips.
So when I was 16, my grandpa gave me his old camper van. It was a GMC 1997 Savannah, and we built it out to be a comfortable camper together. And I ended up living in that and traveling for eight years. And then I lived in a backpack for four years after that, just cooking on a jet boil and sleeping in a tent um, full time. And then I saved up a bunch of money through truck driving to go on a motorcycle trip all the way down to Ushuaia. And then when COVID happened, we were together and we just saw this bus on offer up. And once we looked at it and once we'd walked around and realized that it was like the high ceiling to Colin's body and it was something we really wanted to do, we just impulse purchased it and yeah. then went for it. And started building and the dream became a reality after that pretty quickly. Yeah. Which was awesome. So starting with the bus build, uh, the dream blossomed and we were really excited. Went through our demo, demolition process really, really fast. Had all of the oomph and power behind us. And then reality of the situation kind of hits and you're in a situation where you realize how much work actually really has to go into building a vehicle. And I really struggled with focusing on too much of the future product and oh, when it looks like this or when we have this built. And I was having a hard time staying concentrated and in my present moment. So every day we would start the morning with writing a to-do list of what we wanted to accomplish from that day. And we called it our purpose book. So when we woke up, we knew what was our purpose that day, what we needed to stay focused on. And that really was the fuel behind our our. Uh, our fire, excuse me, to drive us to stay focused and stay motivated every day. Yeah, we just had to keep on chugging and not freak out about the scale of the project because we would want to put a lot of beauty and like detail into a small thing and then it would just feel like insane building a bookshelf for four days. You're like, yeah. how are we ever going to make it to the bed, you know? And then like, how are we ever going to, you know, finish the kitchen at this rate but we just kept pushing and pushing and pushing and we finished the bus in arizona and as the temperature just kept getting warmer and warmer and warmer we started pulling like 10 hour days and then 12 hour days and then like i don't know 24 hour days yeah <laughs> near the near the tail end of it i'd say that was also such a motivator because we were so close and it was becoming to feel so real and so beautiful mm -hmm. that getting to that final product uh, was also a huge motivator for us as well. All right, so these are our bookshelves. They're secured to the steel ribs of the roof with these maple uh, L-bar things. They've got like a countersunk um, self-tapping screw on the front that just goes in at like the perfect angle. So on that one, we support hundreds of pounds. Like I'm serious, it's a hundred pounds of clothes and then there's a ton of books up there. So they're really sturdy. And this is um, a three quarter inch that's just resting here on the wall. We've got a 12 volt Edison bulb that's like wicked bright for a 12 volt light, you know? And it's uh, set into a carved sunflower out of walnut. Yeah, we cut the, the walnut and the maple of different lengths to create this pattern. And then we cut it in half long ways and book match them. So we have two identical patterns for both. And then we cut these uh, walnut crescents here and drilled in little slots for the dowels and then cut all the dowels painstakingly to fit in between the steel rib and the walnut. Uh, we stripped the bus down to sheet metal on the ceiling and floor, and then we did a rust converter and then many, many coats of oil-based primer and paint. And then we got a closed cell spray foam kit. We got in our hazmat suits and we just sprayed this place down for several days. And then we created a, a rubber barrier between all the steel ribs and the ceilings. So there's no thermal bridging because we built it in Phoenix, uh, where it was very apparent, you know, like, when the sun hit the bus in the morning, it was hot instantly and you couldn't even touch the steel. So the blocking the thermal bridging was really important to us. And we did kerf cuts through the quarter inch birch plywood for all the uh, curves of the ceiling. We did a uh, cut, I think every quarter inch across 12 panels, which takes a lot of time. And then once you got it, it's like the scariest thing ever, just crackling it into place. But if you're worried about curve cuts just do more of them and do them deeper and you'll be fine and 
Our floor is also birch. It's made of uh, half inch birch plywood that we ripped into six inch wide strips. And then on a miter gauge, we cut 60 degree angles on both sides, which form hexagons and like the flower pattern and the 3D cube pattern. And they're all glued down to another half inch of subfloor with an inch of insulation underneath that. Also in our ceiling, we did these LED puck lights. We've got eight of them in the ceiling and two of them in the kitchen and then two in the rear. And when they're all lit up at night, it's really beautiful and like evenly lit. We've got a max fan in the ceiling here and we went with the thermostat uh, fan, but we've never actually used it. And we opted not to get the controller cause it's really easy to just flick on and off uh, to control the temperature in here. And here's our wood stove. We ordered this Hobbit stove uh, from Salamander Stoves in England and they had to write up a special invoice and ship it to us and I had to deal with customs to get it here because they're very rare and they don't have a distributor in the States, but they're very happy to do business with you if you want one shipped to you and it was 1200 for the stove and the chimney and shipping and taxes, which is quite reasonable I'd say because it's a really, really, really amazing stove. Yeah, so the stove came with this chimney kit. It came with two sections of triple wall and two sections of single wall that were for um, canal boats. But on Salamander's website, you can choose between like a van kit or a bus kit or a canal boat kit or a tiny house kit with back exit or a top exit. And this stove fits nine to 10 inch logs, which I know is longer than the dwarf or the mini, than the cubic mini. So you can fit in really pretty hunking logs that will burn for hours. And the air intake is this wheel down here. It's very nice. The door has this little um, lip that sticks out. So it's actually a very tight seal. And the air that's let in through the bottom is brought into the firebox through a bunch of like weirdly shaped uh, cast iron wall pieces that we take out when we're driving. And then the gas that comes out of the combustion chamber goes into a secondary burn chamber where it burns off all the gas so then when you're burning hot there's no smoke coming out of the chimney and it doesn't get all over your roof which is another nice thing so for the hearth we wanted to raise up the wood stove off the ground of course because it's tiny it would feel kind of weird being down at our feet and we wanted to have wood storage so we built this super sturdy uh, wood frame that we bolted into the floor which had arches here to support a three quarter inch board and then a half inch hardy board that we also put on the walls in the back. And we took those dimensions and then drew it out on our table and then cut all the tile to fit so that when we brought it in here, we wouldn't have to deal with any funky angles while the grout was wet, not the grout, the mortar was wet. <clears throat> and we got the tiles from like mexicantile.com or something where they have this huge selection of beautiful hand painted tile. So we went through like mostly white and blue options some of them were like crazy busy and we were afraid of like overwhelming the space so we got these on a different site these terracotta and then decided to just go with one belt of painted tile and these ones are kind of a bigger pattern um we bought this piece of sandstone at a landscape supply store in phoenix it was actually a big old flagstone it was like three feet by three feet for 20 bucks and got uh, diamond blades on angle grinders and put on masks and headphones and just jammed out and just had the best time. It's super fun carving sandstone because it's like a soft as soap. And we still have a ton. I think we want to make some other stuff with it. And they warm up really well. When the stove gets up to like 500 degrees, you can just like, yeah, get cozy by this stuff. And it holds the heat for hours after the fire's out too. So in the back of the bus here, we have our bed lifted out of the way above this one eight foot couch and another five foot couch. Um, underneath each couch, there's two tanks. So altogether, we have 150 gallons of freshwater storage underneath both couches, and they're all linked together with the PVC pipe, which is the lowest point sunk into the floor. So they all fill and drain at the same rate. And over here, we've got uh, closet space and also access to the water tank drain down there and that right now is kind of like summer clothes because uh, it's winter in Arizona <laughs> but we need kind of t-shirts and sweaters at the same time and this is our main closet lift these off open this hatch 
and you can lift these organizers up to access all your clothes at the same time, which is really nice because it's a huge chest and we thought about just making like little partitions and just like shoving everything in there. But it would have been a pain to like pull things out and not know where you put things. But with this, you can just lift it up and see everything at once. Yeah, so over here we have another bookshelf. It's constructed in the exact same way as this bookshelf, except for instead of that uh, Edison light, we have these eye hooks for the closet and it's secured into the bus ribs. And this is the one that holds a ton of weight when all those clothes are pulled up. I mean, I, I have to kind of like put my whole body into lifting them. And then these books are very heavy, but it's, it's really sturdy. So our bus came from Oregon and it had uh, the regular bus escape hatch right here that was so obscenely rusted that when we pulled off the ceiling it was just like orange and black streaks all over the whole thing so we thought about modifying it and like putting in a cool like circular window kind of thing but in the end we just ripped the whole thing out and then built one out of walnut and building something weatherproof from scratch is pretty challenging and frustrating but we used a lot of gorilla tape and a lot of clear silicone and did a lot of overlap in the design on the exterior and it doesn't leak we've been through a really rainy rainy winter and so far so good this space really just became goodness gracious something <laughs> to be super proud of because it did involve goodness gracious so much work and so when we're laying in bed at night or we wake up first thing in the morning and I can touch my kitchen cabinet cabinets and open them up and remember all the hard work we went through to build that it really empowers a part of my heart and reminds me that I am strong and I am capable and if you have a dream no matter how crazy it feels you can actually accomplish stuff when you put your mind to it and yeah I, I love looking at different projects and remembering oh I remember when it was 115 degrees outside and we were out there sweating and chopping wood and putting this together and now we have this beautiful art piece to look at and feel really accomplished about. Mm. Yeah. So we want to live in the bus for several years to come uh, traveling around the country and Canada to different farms and learning as much as we can about market gardening because our dream is to buy a piece of property maybe in Oregon somewhere nice and green, maybe a valley or a mountainside, and turn it into a market garden homestead. And having the bus makes us, um, you know, makes us capable of traveling across the country and living on site and like seeing what other people are up to and educating ourselves uh, while being in the comfort of our own home and then coming back to our property where we could also live on the bus while we're building our next house and setting up our farm. Yeah. In the back of the bus here we've got a big old uh, maple and walnut light bar that has two leds on either side and above that we did a little cubby and put a cork board in the back so we could put up little pictures and butterflies and buddhas and this used to be that big old red you know lift this handle because you're gonna die and you gotta escape kind of thing but i chopped it right here and did a little welding and turned it around where you can just slip a bolt the nut right here and lock it because I looked at some lock sets that schoolie builders use where you can like unlock it and lock it from the outside but didn't really seem worth it I also didn't want anyone breaking in to a you know poorly installed or cheap lock on the outside so this is a nice and easy solution this right here is our butterfly table we wanted to have a table that folded out to accommodate four people, maybe five, if you have like a chair right here, and also not stick past this window, like not block any of this window, and it couldn't be any wider than this. And those were our design constraints when we made this table of six hinges, and pulls up like this. There we go. Those fold out, little arms, and on the top, we did a map of Colorado with resin poured over it. 
We built a pulley bed in the back here so that we could access our back door, also like load in big things if we wanted to help people move or just kind of maximize our seating area. So then when you have friends over, you don't have to like have them sitting on your bed and whatnot. This feels like a whole different room when we lift the bed up in the morning. You also don't have to make your bed. You can just kind of chuck everything on there and crank it out of the way and I'll think about it, which is really nice. So we made the frame out of maple and walnut and on the bottom is oak plywood that we drilled a crazy dot art mandala into the bottom of. The whole thing is held up by these cam cleats right here, which have a 900 pound capacity on each. And this is thick paracord. We tried to do it with normal paracord and it slipped and crashed down. It was terrifying. Yeah. And so it goes from these cam cleats to these cheek butts, which are like horizontal pulleys. And then there is a series of eight other pulleys. And with pulleys, when you go up and down, you gain mechanical advantage. And so we're not actually lifting like a 250 pound bed. It feels much easier yeah. to do. So yeah, let's drop it. Okay. And there you, go. there you go. So we have a really unique size of bed. We actually just laid on a piece of plywood and measured our bodies to see how big maximum we could make it. And then we just bought some camping mattress, regular memory foam, and cut it to the unique size to make sure it fits perfectly. And we can use a full sheet, fitted sheet, to pull it around and it holds it all in. Really nice. It's very comfortable. Um, one really fun thing about the bed as well is we installed bubble levels to each side. So if we're parked on a kind of a slant or somewhere that's more uneven, we can pull up on one side of the bed and it can level us out, which is really cool. So we painted the bus with Alkit enamel. We picked out the paints at Home Depot and those little paint swatches and we took them to a local paint company that mixed them up for us and we rolled it with four inch short nap rollers. And I'd highly recommend rolling your bus instead of spraying it. It's actually a lot easier than it sounds and it comes out really nice. And Alkit enamel is good for cars. It's been super durable so far. We only have a couple chips around the bus and they came from like a significant knock from a rock. Like it, it's standing up really well and it cleans. So we spent a couple days sanding down the bus and doing TSP and acetone. And then we did two coats of oil-based primer and then four coats of each paint. Preferably in like the morning or evening when the metal's not so hot because uh, there can be bubbles or it can just streak and go on thin when the metal's hot. Uh, this is our propane tank door. We did a 25 gallon ASME tank that's mounted up into the floor. So it's like this big, pretty pretty wide we call him Chancho big boy and he was like 150 pounds empty and you just open this little gate lock to access the fill and the valve and all that so we went with four Trojan T105 batteries just because they're cheap and they get it done and we've got them linked up in parallel and in series to create a 12 volt system and over here we've got two starter batteries and all of these are linked together through a dual battery relay by Blue Sea Systems. And this is a magnetic switch that switches over at 12.1 volts to combine or isolate both battery banks from each other. So on a sunny day where we're not driving, our starter batteries stay very healthy. And on a cloudy, rainy day where we're driving and there's no sun, our solar batteries and our whole house system uh, maintains a healthy voltage. Up on the roof, we have 660 watts of Renogy solar, and we have a 30 amp Renogy charge controller. And with those panels and these batteries, we've been pretty happy. We were in like, uh, maybe like four or five days of just clouds and no sun at all. And we did bottom out like very, very, very low. Every day we'd have to start the bus and like recharge a little bit and really watch our usage, even like you know, shutting off the fridge at certain points if we didn't have any important food in there. So we are going to get lithium batteries at some point, but we're normally in sunny places because we need sun too. We don't like being depressed and in rainy, crappy weather. So it works. We're fine. <laughs> One of the last things we did for the bus was create these wood mosaics that we call them. And the cool thing about them are that they are all the scrap pieces from our entire build. So all of our leftover bits and pieces were able to go and create this beautiful 
piece of art, which I love that we curved the corners and fit it into the inset of where it used to say school bus. And yeah, if you guys have any other questions about our build, there's our Instagram tag. The jump to move to schooly life involves a lot of fear. Um, fear of, am I gonna fit in with the lifestyle? Is it gonna fulfill me? Am I gonna feel like I have purpose still in my life through living in a school bus and traveling every day? Those were a lot of questions that came up for me personally. But what I've learned is about the jump, when you're there, you get to find new creative things about yourself and your personality. You meet tons of people that have unique homes and you meet these wonderful people through this lifestyle that took that jump and that leap to see if it fits for them. And also it takes you out of the everyday nine to five. I come home to the same apartment that looks the same as my next door neighbors and you feel like you're left or you're living life just in a different scenario or the same scenario but in a different way. You get to feel unique, I guess, and special. I definitely would say don't feel limited by the idea of living in a small space because it actually forces you to be outdoors more, forces you to be involved in your surroundings more, and it also, since you can customize it, however you need to customize it for yourself, you can really feel comfortable in a small space, which is great. Uh, thank you guys for watching. We're slowbus underscore fast house on Instagram. And if you want any custom wood mosaic for the front or back of your van or bus, we're going to start making those. And keep in touch with us on Instagram if you have any questions about how we do what we do. We are also going to start working on building custom teardrop trailers and also gypsy caravans. That's what we're really interested in for our future work because we enjoyed creating this so much. Uh, that company name is Tight Grain. If you'd like to check us out, we'll get started on there. And yeah, thanks so much for watching.